But the following day, we were trying to cross uh, a very, very, very bad bridge. But the idea was to get both bikes up onto the bridge and ride them across. There was no way of walking the bikes. The bridge the was all gone. Complex. There were nothing. There was nowhere to walk. There was a thin so, plank to ride, and that. And was it, it was it was about 60 feet down, 100 foot wide. We couldn't go through the water. We had to use the bridge. Very first night we were camping. A Jaguar. And we were busy doing stuff and it started to rain and we heard this noise and we looked at the track and it's just the dirt track. And we literally went. There was the biggest black cat we have ever seen and it got halfway across the track we had ridden down. Actually, I'm going to tell you how to do this. அவங்க கிட்டே கேட்டு தெரிஞ்சுக்கோங்க ஏன்னா நிறைய அமேசிங் ரைட் இன்டர்நேஷ்னல் லெவலில் பண்ணியிருக்கிறாங்க ஸோ சாரா இருக்கட்டும் மேடமாக இருக்கட்டும் அவங்க பிஎம்டபிள்யூக்கு கூட எயிட் இயர்ஸ் வந்து பிராண்ட் அம்பாசிட்டராக இருந்திருக்காங்க அது மட்டும் இல்லாமல் நிறைய இடத்துல அமேசான் ஸோ அது என்ன அப்படின்னு சொல்லி அவங்க கிட்டே கேட்டு தெரிஞ்சுக்கலாம் சார் யுவர் நேம் பிளீஸ் மை நேம் இஸ் சாய்மன் தாமஸ் ஐம் ஹாஃப் தி டு ரைட் தேர்ல்ட் டீம் And I'm Lisa Thomas. So I'm the much better half of to ride the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, could you please share us the experiment, the best moment of your riding? Oh gosh. Wow. Well, well, for me, the best moment was when we set off in 2003. Okay. That had to be the best moment. Uh there've been so many bests along the way. It's almost impossible because we've had 17 years of bests. Um but that first thing about getting on the road and pulling away and it's just you and your motorcycle on the road, that sense of freedom and real empowerment actually. And ladies out there, I ride my own motorcycle, so make sure you do too. So when you mention the particular name Lady C in india there are a lot of young riders female riders are coming in still most of the people want to become a rider but still they are facing some issues like you know the typical indian mentality what do you want to tell them to get inspired get behind the bars i mean the bars means the motorcycle yeah and you know it's a freedom so as a female rider what do you want to tell you? i know it's incredibly difficult regardless of where you are in the world for a, for a, as a female to start riding uh, a lot of people will assume that you're too small you're too light the bit bikes are too big um and yes some of the bikes are big so you have to just have a look around and see what's comfortable for you um but always make sure uh when you start riding you ride safely so that you know how to ride on the bike properly i always wear kit i always wear shoes and gloves and a helmet um and make sure that you ride your own ride there are plenty yeah. of riders out there and i hate to say it there's plenty of male riders out there that try to put a pressure on the female rider to ride like them and we ride differently female riders are more considerate we think things through a lot this sounds terrible doesn't it i mean male riders are can be the same too but don't feel under the pressure from your partner um or your riding buddies to ride their ride that's regardless actually whether you're male or female ride your own ride i have seen some you know there are some male riders who are like literally dominating the you know becoming budding female or they should, we are going fast why you are not coming fast you just for us so i got the point like what you said sir so you have to tell to what do you want to tell to our young riders um i think i think the most important thing about motorcycling i got into motorcycling when i was actually in my late teens so i i started motorcycling late but motorcycling is about freedom it's about expressing who you are and you can do that on your own bike riding by yourself or with a group of friends but the one thing that's amazing about motorcycling is no matter where in the world you are doesn't matter the country if you arrive on a motorcycle you are about to make new friends and motorcycles when you turn up people have a look and they they don't recognize the number plate straight away why are you here where have you come from how long have you been in my country uh your number of friendships we now have around the world we've now been through almost 100 countries the number of friendships we have is is humbling um and that's because we turn up on a motorcycle if you're in a car it's very easy to wind the windows up and block yourself away from the area from the people that you're going to meet um with a motorcycle 
the very first thing you do after taking your helmet off is put your hand out. You are going to be shaking someone's hand. But yeah, motorcycling is addictive and uh, it's something you fall in love with and you stay in love with it. I just want to tell you something like being in this motorcycle, just as a common, most of the people who ask me how to sustain in the motorcycling, you know, most of the people, youngsters, now in India, motorcycle is getting developed. What yep. they are doing is they are leaving their career and coming into motorcycle and trying to make something, but you know, it's not like 100% it works out. What yeah. do you want to tell to them? Like? Uh, I think the simplest thing is that if you're looking to make a career from motorcycling, if you're using social media, then you have to be prepared to work harder than you think you need to. You have to work 48 hours a day. Yeah. Um, you Non-stop. need to make sure that the content that you're posting um, is not just engaging, it has to be interesting. And high quality. It has to be high quality and it has to be your passion. If you try and fake being excited about something that people are going to tell. So for you to be able to provide good content on a daily or weekly basis, speak from the heart, speak and share about what you're excited about. If it's motorcycles, if it's travel, if it's wheelies, if it's riding in the desert, if it's riding through a jungle, if it's riding to the next town, share that passion, share that excitement, and honestly, people will want to watch. I know you have a beautiful moment in Amazon, so could you please explain? Together. Okay, a beautiful moment in the Amazon. That, it, <laughs> that's one way of putting it. Um, I decided, I do all the routes and I do the research and uh, this has been happening throughout our, our trip um, and I decided that we could ride the Amazon jungle and it was a route that had never been attempted by large capacity motorcycles. Uh, I did all the research and we had ropes and pulleys. We knew there were going to be uh, terrible bridges that we might have to pull the bikes and over. Anacondas, jaguars, mud up to our legs. Yes, mud. Anacondas. Oh, yes. Yeah, we didn't see the anaconda, but the very first the very first night we were camping. A jaguar. And yeah. we were busy doing stuff and it started to rain and we heard this noise and we looked at the track and it's just a dirt track and we literally went there was the biggest black cat we have ever seen and it got halfway across the track we had ridden down and it froze and it looked at us and it was absolutely motionless I think, and then it dove into the jungle. I think when it looked at us it went dinner. dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem was then we were camping and every single time the, 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 there was a storm coming in but every single time a palm tree hit, uh, blue. They're like, ah, it's here. <laughs> you, you, your, your brain goes, Jaguar. It wasn't that we didn't see it again, but we did not expect that on the very first night. But the following day, we were trying to cross uh, a very, very, very bad bridge. This was a route that had been closed for 25 years. And uh, I'm taller than my wife, so the idea was to get both bikes up onto the bridge and ride them across. There was no way of walking the bikes. The bridge the was all gone. Coming. There were nothing. There was nowhere to walk. There was a thin so, plank to ride, and that. And was it, it was it was about 60 feet down, 100 foot wide. We couldn't go through the water. We had to use the bridge. And as I as I used the throttle, I popped the front wheel up. I got the back wheel up. As I got the back wheel up, the wood just crumbled. I fell and I landed on my head. Uh, about uh, two and a half, three meters down, and I was unconscious for a couple of hours. However, uh, in this kind of circumstance and hot weather, uh, a lot of people would, wouldn't be wearing their kit or their helmet because it's so hot. He was, because had he not worn his helmet, he would have died. Dead. Now, his helmet saved him, but uh, he still didn't come round yeah. for maybe six hours. Um, no, it was two or three hours. It, it felt like six. No, but it took six hours to get you going again. Yeah, it would. It, yeah. So when I landed on my head, my helmet compressed onto my shoulders. That was all I remember. I woke up a couple of hours later, but it took another six hours for me to actually stand up. In that time, Lisa brought the bike up right. She used rope and pulley. She lifted an, an R1150 GS on her own, took all the bags off, got me up. On a very um, bad bridge with yeah. no where to stand. <laughs> and, then, uh, and, then on the, and then I I don't remember this, but we had to make a decision. I was blind in my left eye and I was paralyzed. 
So we had to make a decision, do we go back to Manaus? But we knew that they didn't have hospital facilities for whatever this so was. We go forwards. So we went forwards because we knew what was behind us and that was bad. In front of us, it can't be any worse. Oh yes, it, it can. <laughs> so, it, uh, so Lisa towed me for two days, then we had to do lots of repairs. But from the accident to the hospital was three weeks. Um, I was passing out five or six times a day just because of the pain. Uh, we took plastic cable ties and we cable tied each finger to the handlebars. Then we cable tied my, my knee to the bike because I couldn't stay on the bike. Yeah. Um, and then we got to the hospital three weeks later, which was five and a half thousand kilometers. And I get to the hospital and I said, I think I had a problem and I passed out. And when I woke up, uh, they'd done an x-ray. I had a neck brand on and they said, okay, when did this happen? I said, three weeks ago. No, no, you don't understand. Because they were speaking Portuguese. I said, no, I speak Portuguese. When did this happen? And I said, no, this happened three weeks ago. Why? You shouldn't be alive. Your neck is broken in two places. Your blindness is because your C6 vertebrae is dislocating and it's cutting into your spinal cord. Three weeks ago, you shouldn't be alive. If it wasn't for this lady pulling me out of the jungle, I wouldn't be here. But that was the most... That was the most demanding part of our lives. And then there was lots of other stuff that happened as well, but that's probably not appropriate for an interview. Yeah. In this point, I want to tell ladies, most of the people you say like physically, mentally, you are weak. Here you have an inspiration. By Thank mentally you. and physically, by at the moment first, you know, they will go down by mentally. Yep. And, you know, lifting a 20 GS with the luggage is not an easy task. No. On her own, she did it like, <laughs> on, on a goosebump moment, and I was like, wow. It's not an experience I would choose to repeat. I, yeah. But I, we might be going back to the Amazon next year to yeah, try it again. Maybe. We'll see. But it's one of these things that uh, people say, how did you cope with that situation? But the thing is, you don't look at the whole situation. You look at little parts. And you go, this needs to be done now and do it. Now this needs to be done. Because if you look at everything, all of the problems and complications together, you maybe will it's sit down and just go, I can't. It's, if you think about my husband's nearly dead, he can't ride his bike, the bike's, bike's not working, we've got 5,000 kilometers to ride, he's in too much pain. The, pro the problem seems insurmountable. insurmountable yeah. But if you just take one step and you fix that and then but you fix the next step. I think that that is like life in general, isn't it? You, you, do, you do little parts and you get over this one hurdle and then you go, now's the next hurdle. Because if you look at the whole thing, it can become overwhelming. It's, intimid it's intimidating. I, yeah. I can tell one more thing here where the love also comes out, you know. I can say like, you know, Taking whenever you are out of the bike, you have to cut the tax, you have to make him sit down, and again you have to make him sit. You know, that's where the most of your confidence and your bondness creates a lot. Yeah. So hats off to you for that. <laughs> Seriously, thank you. Thank that's you. very kind. Thank like, you very much. No, no. See, this is inspirations not only for the biking. The whoever people thinks that I am mentally weak, you inspire them. And, you know, whoever like think, whoever a sickness, they can't come out or, you know, some people, they are well, but they think that they are weak. You are an inspiration for I them think, as I well. I think the problem is today, uh, again, because of social media, everybody wants to be heard and it's very, very easy. It takes no imagination and it takes no effort to be negative. So if someone feels bad about themselves, they will typically say bad things about other people. But the reality is people everywhere, it doesn't matter about race, religion, creed or age, people generally are far more capable of amazing things than they allow themselves to believe. I think um, you always say are stronger than they believe. fear dictates a lot of people's lives and their decisions that they make. And so it's easier to not make that decision at all and just stay... But in but, your but deciding family. deciding to do nothing, whether it's family, whether it's work, whether it's job, it doesn't matter. Choosing or deciding not to make a decision until later is a decision. 
And the only way to go forward is through action, is through making new friends, making new contacts, thinking, there's something I want to do. I don't know if it's possible. But if I try it and I succeed, fantastic. If I try it and it doesn't succeed, it doesn't work, find something else that does work. But and keep, learn from lo those keep looking for those yeah. situations that will allow you to be happier, that will allow you to live live life. So guys, here you go. The true, I can say, a true uh, passionate and also inspiring riders. So thank you for giving, you know. You were very welcome. Thank, thank you. It's a pleasure speaking and, to you. Okay. So you are in India and you are in Goa. How cool is Goa now? Okay, so I mean the climate especially. <laughs> okay, so I, ha I have to tell you, we are not very English. We 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 love hot weather. Uh -huh. So all day I've had this motorcycle jacket on, and I've had friends go, "No, take it. You must be hot." We just uh, we acclimatize very quickly. Yeah. But we were lucky enough to be in India for almost six months, and uh, obviously we spent some time in Goa as well, and that was ten. About 10, about 10 was, years ago. The first time we were in India was 10 years ago, ten years. and we were here for almost six yeah. months. Yeah. We explored, I think we explored 26 states and six unions. So we, we traveled India extensively. But India is pretty special. The people, the atmosphere, the energy, and the food. And we love that. <laughs> so it's more of an old one thing. Um, so to, right now, to get an invite to come and speak and share our journey with India Bike Week, for us, genuinely, it's a privilege. So we are privileged to have you over here. So guys, here's the thing. They are going to back on India. If you see them, stop. You know, you should say hello. Yeah, not with hello, with a handshake. <laughs> yes. Perfect. So basically, you know, biking, you say, as a friend, I think biking brotherhood is... We all come under one family. Yes. Absolutely. Two will mix a family. So thanks for it. One family, one bigger tribe. Yeah, true. And what do you want to tell about our people's like, you know, you can tell something. About yeah, Drive so, I mean, Drive Spark, really cool guys. They came over, said hello, and straight away we knew we had to have a conversation. So it's been our pleasure. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.